Hello everyone, welcome to Tangled Threads. If you enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to our channel. Let's go. My story begins about two months ago, when I, a 30-something computer engineer, moved into a humble two-story apartment complex in the heart of Jacksonville. The ad had spoken volumes about its homey feel, and the price was within budget. I was ready to embark on a new chapter of my life after a stressful corporate job in Chicago. The complex was composed of four apartments, a quaint red brick building with white trim around the windows and doors. It had an inviting aura. My landlord, Mr. Thompson, a rotund man in his late fifties with a graying beard and piercing green eyes, greeted me with a robust handshake and a salesperson's smile. Something about his overly friendly demeanor set off alarm bells, but I shrugged it off as the usual landlord-tenant dynamic. Ah, Mr. Stevens, he boomed, his booming voice filling the courtyard of the complex. Welcome to our happy family. Our initial conversation was about the usual things, rent, utility bills, maintenance issues. But as we delved deeper into the discussion, Mr. Thompson's mask began to slip ever so slightly. You know, Mr. Stevens, he started, scratching his beard thoughtfully. This place has always been peaceful. It's just the low-life single parents who think they can get away with late rents, always pulling at your heartstrings with their sob stories. I hope you're not here to do the same. His words were delivered with a bitter chuckle, his green eyes losing their warmth. Something about his tone bothered me. His dismissal of the struggles of single parents left a sour taste in my mouth. But being new in town and to the complex, I merely nodded, choosing to not make an enemy on day one. Later, as he showed me around the complex, he would often pause to make pointed comments about the other tenants, subtly revealing his disdain and prejudice. He referred to Lisa as that woman who always has an excuse for late rent, and chuckled at his own derogatory remark. Despite his friendly facade, there were clear signs of his true nature, signs I had initially missed or dismissed, but now, in hindsight, should have been glaring red flags about the kind of man my landlord was. My obliviousness to his true character that day now fueled my determination to bring his misdeeds to light. The sweet justice I felt when confronting him was a reminder of my initial gullibility and how I had come full circle in my understanding of this man. I was living there for about a month when I noticed Mr. Thompson's unusually frequent visits to the apartment adjacent to mine. It was occupied by a petite woman in her early thirties named Lisa. Lisa was a single mother. Her sunken eyes and tired smiles told a tale of relentless effort and sleepless nights. She had a young, chirpy daughter named Emily, who was always joyous despite their predicament. One day as I was leaving for work, I happened to glance through the large window that faced the main street. I caught sight of Mr. Thompson rummaging through Lisa's purse. My heart sank as I saw him pocket a couple of bills and leave the apartment with a satisfied smirk. The sight made my stomach churn, but due to an important meeting, I had to rush. As I drove, the mental image of Mr. Thompson's repugnant act played on a loop. I decided it was time to teach this man a lesson. It took me the entirety of my commute to devise a plan, one that involved a counterfeit $100 bill. I'd slip the fake bill into Lisa's purse before Mr. Thompson's routine visit, and then expose him, effectively catching him red-handed. It seemed simple enough, but the execution needed to be flawless. The next day I went through my plan. I walked over to Lisa's apartment under the pretext of asking her to keep an eye on my plants as I was out of town for the weekend. As we chatted about Emily's school, I discreetly placed the counterfeit bill into her purse. The following day, when I saw Mr. Thompson approaching Lisa's apartment, my heart pounded against my ribcage. I pushed away the creeping nerves, squared my shoulders, and followed him up to the apartment door. He looked surprised as he saw me standing there. Just wanted to chat about the complex's parking regulations, Mr. Thompson. I lied, my tone casual. Lisa let us both in, an apprehensive expression on her face. She busied herself with brewing some coffee, allowing us to talk. I made mundane conversation, all the while keenly watching Mr. Thompson, my eyes boring holes into him as he pretended to listen. Mr. Thompson's eyes wandered around the room before finally landing on Lisa's purse on the dining table. The air seemed to thicken as he surreptitiously dipped his hand into her purse. He pulled out the $100 bill, quickly folding it, and slipped it into his pocket. That was my cue. Mr. Thompson, I said, raising my voice just a tad, breaking through the hum of the coffee maker. You wouldn't steal a dollar $100 bill from a single mother, would you? His face turned ghostly white, 
those piercing green eyes wide with shock. He stammered, I, I haven't seen any. Oh, really? I cut him off, a calculated smirk on my face. I pointed at his pocket. What about that bill you just pocketed? Could you show it to us? With shaking hands, he fumbled to retrieve the bill, unfolding it. I snatched it out of his trembling hands and brandished it for Lisa to see. Her eyes widened, her mouth forming a silent, Oh, that's a fake hundred dollar bill, Mr. Thompson. I planted it in Lisa's purse, just to see if you'd stoop so low. The words hung heavily in the room. His face, once rosy and full of life, was now an ashen hue of gray. His eyes darted around the room, seeking an escape that wasn't there. Lisa's shocked gaze was locked onto him, her knuckles white as she gripped the countertop. He was caught, and he knew it. He tried to make a run for it, but my reflexes were to fast for him this day. I quickly stuck my leg out and tripped him into Lisa's bookshelf. Thankfully, Mr. Thompson was okay. But Lisa's bookshelf? Well, that's a different story. I grabbed my phone and swiftly dialed 911, explaining the situation to the operator with Mr. Thompson sitting on the ground, frozen in fear. The police arrived shortly after, and upon hearing the accusation and seeing the counterfeit money, handcuffed Mr. Thompson, whose face was a portrait of shock and guilt. The man who had once held authority was now trembling, his deception unfurled for all to see. News of the incident spread like wildfire in the complex. Lisa, relieved yet shaken, thanked me with teary eyes. As for Mr. Thompson, the man who had been seen as a helpful landlord was unmasked for what he truly was, a manipulative thief. As I sat back in my apartment later that evening, I couldn't help but feel a strange sense of accomplishment. I had managed to help a single mother and teach a scoundrel a lesson he wouldn't forget. In the process, I learned that no matter where you live or who you are, standing up against wrong can create a wave of change that starts right at your doorstep. Update. Weeks following the incident, Mr. Thompson was released on bail. He came back to the complex, his pride severely bruised and reputation tarnished. He wasn't a defeated man yet. He had one more vile trick up his sleeve. He attempted to get Lisa evicted, taking her to court over late rent payments. Given Lisa's circumstances, a single mother working two jobs to make ends meet, the news was a brutal blow. However, we rallied the residents of our complex, preparing to fight tooth and nail for her. The court day came with a heavy tension hanging in the air. The judge, an empathetic woman with sharp eyes, listened to both sides. Lisa, dressed in her best, her face pale but determined, presented her case. She explained her struggle as a single mother, the late nights working two jobs, and the difficulty of making ends meet. Mr. Thompson, on the other hand, painted Lisa as a freeloader. His arguments, though articulate, lacked compassion and were a clear reflection of his ruthless nature. The courtroom fell silent, the atmosphere heavy with anticipation. However, the judge, after hearing Lisa's heart-wrenching plea, dismissed the case, emphasizing the need for understanding and humanity towards struggling single parents. But the real twist came when, during the case proceedings, an examination of Mr. Thompson's financial records was ordered. The records revealed a horrifying amount of fraud, from inflating maintenance charges to siphoning off funds meant for complex improvements. Mr. Thompson was promptly arrested in court, his face aghast as he was led away in handcuffs. His fall from grace was now complete, from the respected landlord to a jailed fraudster. Meanwhile, Lisa, relieved from the stress of the court proceedings, thanked everyone for their support. She found herself surrounded by a newfound family in our apartment complex, each of us ready to lend a helping hand. Justice had been served in more ways than one, and the apartment complex returned to a peaceful life. The experience taught us the importance of unity and reinforced our collective belief in standing up against wrongdoing. Mr. Thompson's reign was finally over, and Lisa, no longer under the threat of eviction, could breathe freely once again. Well, folks, looks like the only complex our dear landlord will be managing now is a complex relationship with his cellmate. What do you think? Let us know in the comments section below. When you subscribe, be sure to click the notification bell. Click here for more Tangled Threads.